Hi everyone, good afternoon. So I want to introduce myself before we begin. My name is Cedric Joseph Mandapa. I am part of the CAS Department, College of Arts and Science Department. And for this time, let's have a podcast webinar. The title of our webinar is Understanding the Psychology of Love and Enhancing Relationships in the New Normal. As we all know, we already transgressed to this point of life right now wherein we need to follow protocols from the government. Social distancing is really important and there are curfews and a lot of things that is not same anymore before. So what is the new normal? How does this affect our relationships we have to our friends, to our family members, and to our special loved ones? Okay, so before we begin, I want to know how productive are you this week? So I want you to rate yourself honestly. Please get a sheet of paper or any paper you have right now there and write this uh, write your rating here. So one as the lowest and five being the highest. So number one, most of the time I am in my bed or sofa and unable to accomplish my schoolwork. What's your rating for yourself, students? Number two, I can accomplish simple tasks like household chores or making my modules, but I still spend a lot of time using my phone or doing other stuff unnecessary. All right, number three, I have able to balance my time in, in, in recreation and school work. Number four, I consider myself productive and I practice good time management skills during this COVID quarantine period. Rate yourself one to five. And the last one, I have able to accomplish a lot of school tasks at the time and able to learn new things and skills. All right, just rate as honest as you can. It doesn't mean that you need to think a lot of things, just whatever, whatever you think is the most appropriate for you right now. All right, so before we begin, Right now, formally, I'd like to I'd like to really invite you guys to please do uh, watch my videos. I have my own YouTube channel, my dear learners. This is Sadi Mandap. Just search it on YouTube. Your daily dose of inspiration and good vibes. So a lot of videos there just for you to learn about anything in life, about being positive, about how to become better, and so on and so forth. Just search my YouTube video. I mean my channel on YouTube and I hope you're going to like the videos and do click the subscribe button. Okay, so let's formally begin. The objectives of this webinar podcast is to define love in the new normal in the context of family, friendships, and dating. This will also discuss how the new normal setup affects relationships and to learn ways how to strengthen relationships despite the current situation we have right now. All right, I hope you're going to learn a lot of things and you can apply this after the session. So I want to bring this quote here. I search it from the internet and it gives me a strong impact. I learned from this quote. I just want to share this to you. So this is what the quote says. Resilience is accepting your new reality even if it's less good than the one you had before. You can fight it. You can do nothing but scream about what you've lost. Or you can accept that and try to put together something that's good. As we all know, the pandemic we are currently facing right now has caused a paradigm shift to our activities. Social distancing should, should be followed and even this caused a lot of limitations to our boyfriends, girlfriends, to our special someones, and even to our friends. You know, social media had caused, had become our instrument to connect to other people, but it has its it has its own limitations as well. Even though we can connect with them virtually, iba pa rin yung may physical connection ka sa mga taong mahal mo. So, how can we adapt to this new normal in terms of having relationships to the people na hindi natin kasama? 
Okay, let's have another survey. I just want you to think this by yourself. Just yes or no. All right? Just be mindful of your answer. Number one, you can find true love in Facebook or dating apps. Yes or no. Number two naman, finding true love during pandemic seems impossible. Mm -hmm. Number three, the pandemic has strengthened my relationship to my partner or to my family. Yes or no. Number four, the pandemic had caused distress and conflicts with my partner or my family. Nagkaroon ba siya ng problema? Does it arise to a lot of conflicts because of the pandemic? And all right, so I just want to ask you this question, my dear students. May forever pa ba sa corona? Alam natin na itong coronavirus na to hindi natin alam kung gang kailan siya. We don't know when will this end. We are really be so. Uh, some people are being pessimistic about this, like they are trying to change their lives right now because of the off because of the pandemic. We are adjusting. We are striving to be normal again. To work with this, uh, even we have the problem here, but still we want to work this out and be better. So the question here, can we still find love life during the coronavirus pandemic? Well, I believe a lot of stories sa mga kaibigan ko, talagang nasasabi nila sa akin na for those people that I've known na they are together inside a house, their relationship had been strengthened because of the pandemic. Ang daming relationship kasi nasa bahay sila. They are living together, they cook, they play, they sleep together. And in this, in that kind of instance, it allowed them to connect to one another without external distraction. Pero paano naman yung mga taong hindi magkasama sa bahay? Where they live separately? How can they, they, how can they adapt? And for those people who are still in the dating stage, meron pa ba talagang forever sa corona? Paano magsusurvive ang mga relationships who are still continuing to be built? That's the question I want you to answer. So, in that note, let's learn about love. I know you have your own definitions ng pag-ibig or love. Love has a lot of definitions. Even science has no definite meaning of what love is. So, I just want to quote some of my favorite lines here coming from different philosophers. According to Khalil Gib Gibran, life without love is like a tree without blossoms or fruit. So, ganun daw. So, para siyang flower or para siyang plant na walang fruit or walang productivity or wala siyang bunga. Ganun. You know you're in love when you can't fall asleep because reality is finally better than your dreams. This is by Dr. Seuss. So, this tells us na talagang ang mundo natin, it can be shaken by love, it can be changed by love. You cannot, you cannot go to sleep, hindi ka na makatulog, iniisip mo yung special someone mo. Or you are so in love with the idea of love. That's how it changes our reality. And this is my personal quote that made this ginawa ko to sa sarili ko lang how I, how I see and view love for me love is the greatest human experience one can have in a lifetime so sobrang this is an, ex, this is an experience wherein every one of us should experience because it's really a very happy, pleasant experience that the person can feel in his lifetime so with so of these definitions of love, iba-iba tayo ng mga paniniwala. Mga Pinoy, meron din silang mga iba't ibang paniniwala ng pag-ibig. So ito yung mga quotes. Sabi dito sa mga quotes na to, sa dami ng tao sa mundo, di mahirap maghanap ng taong mamahalin. Alam mo yung anong mahirap hanapin? Yung taong deserving. True naman, di ba? Bakit ba naimbento ang monsary? Dahil karamihan ng mga relasyon, hindi na umaabot ng anniversary. Wow, <laughs> sobrang sawi naman si Kuya. 
Kung mahal mo ang isang tao, hindi ka na maghahanap ng wala sa kanya. Makontento ka kung anong meron siya at tanggapin kung anong kayang ibigay niya. ba? Diba? Ito naman, hindi lahat ng minamahal dapat ipaglaban at hindi lahat ng nagmamahal sa'yo dapat mong saktan. So this boils down to seeing our self-worth as a person. No? Kung we are this... Because every one of us are deserving to be loved, but not everyone, every person deserves the love that we can give. So, everyone, my dear learners, I want you to always remember your self-worth. In every relationship, alamin ninyo na deserve, nin, na deserve kayong mahalin at deserve ninyong taong pagmamahal sa inyo in the right way. Okay? So, pumunta na tayo sa hugot question number two. So, sir, what are the signs of red flags in dating and engaging to relationships? I want you to answer this, my dear students. Ano ba yung mga red flags na kailangan nating tignan? O yung mga bagay na parang factor na, uy, it will not going to work, this will this will not this this, this is not long lasting, is this is all this is only fleeting. So, for me personally, ang makikita kong mga factors kung yung person na yun, hindi na siya, hindi ka na niya nakikita on the way that the person sees you before. Nag-iiba na yung kanyang mood. Unlike before na sobrang excited siya and sobrang happy na happy siya. But ngayon na parang nagkaroon na ng parang boredom or nagkaroon na ng parang sort of may mga trials na kayong pinagdadaanan. Little by little, there are fruits of despair. There are fruits of mistrust already that is happening in your relationship marami ng mga problemang nag-aarise but you know problems are normal in every relationship but iba yung problem na shallow no yung masyadong mabababa yung masyadong mababaw na mga problema it's starting to go in your relationship na hala hindi naman ganito dapat yung isang relasyon kailangan kapag mayroon kayong problema it should be more of something na kailangan talagang pagpag-usapan at may sense, hindi lang yung mga mamagbabaw na mga problema. So, the question here is, why do people fall in love? And why are some forms of love long-lasting and others so fleeting? Well, personally, my dear students, the marriage of my family had, has worked. My parents, they are so happy right now, even in the 30 years plus of their marriage, masayang-masaya sila. But there are relationships na talagang nag i end sila kahit sobrang tagal na nila. So, bakit ba, bakit ba talaga may mga relationship na hindi tumatagal? At bakit may mga relationship na, na tumatagal? What are the factors beyond these questions here? So psychologists and researchers, they proposed several different theories to explain how love forms and how does it endures. So there are stages of love, all right, for every person. Again, it's a human experience and so with this experience, there are a lot of stage na kailangan nating pagdaanan to a special someone. So again, I have read a lot of things down na love or being in a in a romantic relationship is something to be to, to be cherished and kailangan natin siya it's part of our need as human persons as human beings to experience this and this gives us and this will lead us to maturity and even help us to become better and love again is a basic human emotion my dear students but understanding how and why it happens is not necessarily easy hindi siya ganun kadali in fact for a long time many people suggested that love was simply something too primal mysterious and spiritual for science to ever fully understand so even science cannot understand why does love happen to a person bakit ka naiin love sa person na yon ano ba yung source nun does it happen on the heart or the brain a lot of fictions a lot of a lot of research, no? But still, it's different. We are diverse. The loving experience is different from one person to another. Iba yung experience ko, iba yung experience ninyo. So, again, it's part of our need, just like what I said a while ago. So, going to the Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, love is also a need. So, after mong magkaroon ng pagkain, ng tubig, ng shelter, 
and being safe and being secured and having so much resources, we all need to be loved and to, be, and to feel belong. Not only love from a special someone, but love as well from our parents, from our family, from our friends. Diba? To have that sense of connection to other people. We need to feel that we belong in order for us to reach self-actualization. Okay? So again, it's a need for everyone. We need to love and give love at the same time. So I want to introduce this theory from Robert Sternberg. This is the triangular three of love. So according to his theory, there are three components of love, namely its intimacy, passion, and commitment. The combination of these different components will lead us to different types of love. Okay, so let's learn more about that. Alright, so again, please do subscribe at my channel, Sedi Mandap, and please do like the videos, and I hope you're going to learn a lot of things from that YouTube channel. So again, psychologist Robert Sternberg, Robert Sternberg had proposed a triangular three, suggesting that there are three components of love. First component is intimacy. So this involves feelings of closeness, connectedness, and bondness to each other to that special someone. So you feel close to a person and you feel connected na yung person na yun nagigets kung sino ka, na merong kayong special connection ng taong yun. It doesn't necessarily connote lang na sa mga, sa mga lovers lang to, but also to your, to your friends and family members as well. The second component is passion. This involves the feelings and the desires that this will lead to physical attraction, romance, and sexual consummation. So whenever a person has passion, all right, what happens to a person is he feels that there are desires to be with that person. He or she feels physically attracted to that person. All right. Sometimes he can feel to be romantically inclined with a person. Nagkakaroon ng mutual understanding, gusto mo siyang laging kasama, and so on. That is passion. And the last one is commitment. This is the highest component to the three components from Robert Sternberg. This involves the feelings that lead a person to remain with someone and move toward the shared goals they have. So again, the different combinations of these three components will result to different types of love. So ano-ano yung mga types of love na yun? So first is we have the compassionate love. This is when there is intimacy and there is commitment. That is compassionate love. You feel intimate with a person and you want to have a commitment with a person. Another form of love is romantic love where there is passion and there is intimacy with a person. This is where you feel that there is a desire to be with a person and you feel intimate kapag magkasama kayo. And also we have passion plus commitment. This is where you feel that you want to commit with the person as well. You have that desire to be with that person. That is fatuous love. The best or the highest form of love that can happen to, to anyone is the consummate love. It means everything no? to consume. Intimacy plus passion Last commitment. What does it mean? You feel to be you feel that you have intimate, you want to be intimate with, with a person as well as you are passionate with a person to be with a person, and you there is a commitment that you want to have with a person. So again, you feel that there is a connection with you and the person, and you desire to be with that person, and you want to commit your life with a person. That is the highest form of love and again, consummate means the union, the union of all of these components. This happens in marriages, diba? Whenever you are together for, for so much, for such a long years, diba? And a lot of times, a lot of memories already. Na, and this happened very rare. For me, it happens very rarely. Consummate love is rare to find. For most couples where there is a total acceptance of the person 
And there is a total union between all of these components. Alright, so according to Robert Sternberg, relationships built on two or more elements are more enduring than those based on a single component. So let's go, let's just go back in this part here. It's normal to fall under compassionate love or even or even romantic love or even fatuous love. It doesn't necessarily connote that hindi tama yon. Okay, so it's normal to fall under those. But kung isa lang, when you feel like if you feel like passion lang, it's not a long-lasting type of love because there are weaker foundations where the relationship stands. It needs to combine to another component for it to become more stronger. Okay? And again, Sternberg used the term consummate love to describe the combining of intimacy, passion, and commitment. This type of love is the strongest type of love and very enduring. And this is very rare, just like what I said. So for those people who have been together for so long, years of marriage, a lot of people na wanting to be in this kind of stage, then good luck to you, okay? I hope you can reach in this type of love. Hukot question number three. Paano ba mag-date ang mga mag during sa pandemic? I asked this to my brother and he and he answered me, well, so ano lang, Facebook, social media, messenger, calling, ganyan. So ang hirap, kapag hindi kayo nakalive in, people are still living in their own roofs. This is a challenge because the pandemic had caused a new normal for us to adapt and we can now we can no we can no longer physically be together there is a limitation on that because of the curfews so here's the question how can you adapt in this culture we are having right now wherein there are there are limitations and social distancing are really applied to our country how can we go on with this pandemic for our relationships so for me the connection should always be there it should never be lost the communication is the key to every relationship and for me even though you cannot see yourself every day hindi kayo nakikita araw-araw kahit na hindi kayo nagkikiss or nagahug as long as there is this attachment that you want to bond with a person you say nakamusta ka there is this still a concern for the person na malaman kung paano siya. Social media are given to us for us to have those, for us to adapt. And let's use social media to survive. Alright? So, yun lang yung masasabi ko. And sobrang mahirap ito for some couples who are still starting kasi gusto talaga na mas makilala mo yung person. Iba kasi talaga pag talagang physically you're together rather than virtually. There are differences. There are non-verbal gestures na hindi mo nakikita with the person na kausap mo lang. Right? So again, we need, we need to adjust and adapt to this new normal. Alright? And compromise, really. My dear students, we need to compromise with one another. And I want to really discuss this to you, the seven types of love during the pandemic. Not really during the pandemic, but what are the forms of love? It doesn't necessarily mean that it's more of a passionate or consummate or intimate type of love, but, you know, the forms of love that can be formed with our persons to other people and to our friends, to our family members, and to all people important to us. Number one is friendship. Friendship is a form of love. The warmth and the closeness to, to another person, having that intimacy. But there are no intense passion or long-term commitment. So, ayun, na friend zone ka lang. So, meron lang kayong intimacy. It means na close na close kayo. You feel that you understand each person each other, you feel na kindred spirits kayo ng best friend mo. Just like to my friend, Micah. Micah is my best friend and I feel so connected with her. We have intimacy. Alright? So, there are no other uh, sorts of like passion or commitment to be with a person. Maybe sa, maybe at some point, but this is friendship. This kind of love really um, balances or ito yung nag-segregate to other types of love. 
the second type of love is infatuation. Okay, this is the love at first sight wherein you feel that there is a passion. You have that desire to be with a person. Hala, may crush ka. Nakita mo si crush. Nakita mo yung post ni crush sa IG or nag or even nag-like siya sa mga sa post mo sa Facebook. There is a passion with that. You feel so desire. You feel that there is a desire to be with a person and to be close with a person. But this lacks intimacy and commitment. So it's more of there is an infatuated love that can disappear suddenly. So, madali lang siyang mawala. Kaya yung mga crush ninyo dyan, ganun, crush lang yan, okay? Huwag nyo nang maggoing komplikado yung mga buhay ninyo. So, basta alam ninyo na dun lang yung level ninyo para hindi kayo masaktan. Well, for some types of love, it can evolve naman eventually. Having this, having of course, commitment and having intimacy kapag ito nagsama-sama i'm sure magi-evolve yung type of love niyo to a special someone or to other people number 3 naman is empty love wherein commitment exists may commitment nga but the relationship lacks intimacy and passion this is applicable for most busy people like for, like like for example yung mga wala nang oras sa isa't isa because talagang busy na sila sa kanilang mga sariling ginagawa like sa work niya busy siya sa kanyang uh, sa kanyang hobby and so nawawala na yung desire nawawala na yung passion to be with a person and so the loves becomes empty Papa, it means pawala na yung pag-ibig or yung love ninyo sa isa't isa the fourth type of love is romantic love where is this is the very common type of love sa mga magjowa or sa mga girlfriend mga mag-boyfriend dyan, wherein intimacy and a passion exist, pero hindi pa yung commitment, but not on the not on the commitment stage. Do you know what I... I'm Alright. So, ayun. So, intimacy and passion exist, but not com, not really commitment. So, this revolves around the obsessive thinking and craving of, of the person. It can even go towards having sexual relationships with the person. Again, hindi pa... Wala pa masyadong ganun na na-establish na commitment to be with a person but you want to be with a person and you there is intimacy and there is desire number five the money is companionate love so here is a type of love like companion kasama mo sa buhay intimacy and commitment here exist but relationship lacks passion so, it's more of affectionate type of love and nababasi sa pagkakaibigan ninyo. So, gusto mo siyang laging kasama, gusto mo siya laging kachat, or gusto mo siya laging um, kausap, or even ka-vid call, ganyan. So, friendship yung naging foundation ninyo. Well, for me, this will evolve eventually to a romantic type of love and even to consummate type of love. Number six naman is the fatuous love. Fatuous love is... This is like a whirlwind romance type of love. Commitment motivated primarily by passion and commitment but lacks intimacy. Ito naman yung parang pang, ma pang mabilisan. Sobrang bilis. Parang gusto mo nang tumira sa bahay niya. Gusto mo nang makipag-live-in sa kanya. Yung agad-agad na bubuo yung inyong relationship. Pero ang kulang dito is yung intimacy. Hindi pa na-form yung bondage ninyo together. There is desire and you want to be committed but you know, the lacking thing here is how is the foundation of your relationship? There is still no intimacy. You didn't still know him much more. Hindi mo pa siya kilala masyado. And with that, fatuous love siya. And yung mga, yung mga, yung mga, yung mga ganitong klaseng love, I don't want to judge, but this can develop naman, but mostly, madaling mawala. And Number seven is consummate type of love or consummate love. Ito yung pinaka-ideal sa mga relationships. This involves all the three elements, the intimacy, passion, and commitment. And again, very rare to find. This is for those people who have been together for so long. Sobrang happy nila sa kanilang marriage and napakasaya nila. And yun, they have accepted everything about themselves and to one another. Okay, those are the types of love and 
I just want to take note of this. There are different types of love may be present at different stages. Pwede magbago-bago. Pwede siya mag-evolve over time being from a romantic type of love. Pwede siya maging consummate love and passionate love and so on and so forth. So, in other words, there are many more than of the seven types of love when taking into account that humans are driven by their biological need to procreate, which is lust. And so, romantic love, but passion is more enduring, meaningful, and cerebral than lust. So, iba talaga yung connection, no? Iba talaga yung nagsastart sa intimacy. And let's define and differentiate compassionate love from passionate love. What are the differences? So, compassionate love, this is established through a stable label. May trust na kayo sa isa't isa. Characterized by mutual respect, attachment, affection, and trust to one another. Compassionate love usually develops out of feelings of mutual understanding and shared respect for one another. So it means that in this type of love, you already bounded na may trust ka na sa person na yun na hindi kanya lolokohin, na ikaw lang ang kanyang mamahalin at vice versa. You want to establish a commitment with a person. That is compassionate love. But when, when, when we say passionate love, this is mostly nangyayari sa mga ligawan stage or yung mga honeymoon stage wherein may mga selos, may mga away, ganyan. So characterized by intense emotions, sexual attraction, anxiety, and affection to a person. These intense emotions are reciprocated to people feeling elated, and fulfilled. So, ito yung part or stage of love ninyo wherein kinikilala mo pa siya. Of course, hindi pa ganun ka-establish yung trust ninyo sa isa't isa. Pero, you want to commit with a person. But, not really on that level na gusto mo na talagang tumira with a person. You're still trying to know the person. ba? You're still trying to um, to really uh, to really identify and try or test the waters if this will work or not. Okay, so this will eventually go to compassionate love. Okay, ayun. So I hope naging clear to sa inyo and sana meron kayong natutunan sa types of love natin. Joa, question number four naman. Paano mag-work ang mga relationships ngayong pandemic? This question is very important for most na may mga ka-relationships. Of course, ngayon limited na ang access natin even going outside, we are prohibited or we are discouraged to go outside kung wala naman tayong gagawin sa labas. And of course, with this problem we have currently facing, kailangan nating mag-adjust and mag-adapt sa new normal natin ngayong pandemic. Paano ba mag-work? Of course, for me, compromise ang pinaka-importante dyan at hindi nawawala ang communication ninyo sa isa't isa. Communication is the key for you to survive to be to be together and stay faithful to one another. Hindi ibig sabihin kapag bored ka, kailangan mo nang humanap ng iba or kapag busy yung another person, you need to you need to attend to other person or you need to entertain other people. Para sa akin, when you love the person, hindi mag it will not change, hindi magbabago how you relate with the person, even though lim limited lang ang inyong connection, you still make the ways. Because mahal mo yung taong yun. ba? Gagawa at gagawa ka ng paraan to relate with the person. And always remember, this is only temporary guys, but we don't know when will this pandemic ends. Just adjust, okay? And compromise with the person. Kayo, ano sa tingin nyo? Paano mag-work ang mga relationships? during sa pandemic. So, I want to introduce also to you guys, to you, The Five Languages of Love by Dr. Gary Chapman. I think you are familiar of this. Number one is the words of affirmation. So, ito yung mga words na gusto nating marinig minsan sa mga taong mahal natin kasi we feel valued. We feel that we, that we are validated with a person. Like, Simple words, ang ganda mo naman today, baby, I love you. Parang mga gusto na kita makasama sa buhay. You are the one for me. Those words that make the person uh, commit to you, that make that affirmation. But I want to tell this to you, the validation should never come from the person. 
it should always begin from yourself. The validation should become or begin from from yourself. Hindi mo kailangan maghanap ng, ng sort of affirmation sa ibang tao to feel happy or to feel that you are validated. You should personally tell yourself that I am happy today. I am so smart. I'm so productive. Ang galing ko naman. Simulan nyo sa mga sarili ninyo. Okay, number two is the acts of service. Ito naman yung mga, mga tipong mga bagay na ating ginagawa sa other persons wherein they feel that they are being valued. Yung gusto kita tulungan sa thesis mo, gusto kita tulungan sa mga assignments mo, gusto kita tulungan sa ginagawa mo ngayon. It feels for the person na merong pakialam yung other person sa kanya because gusto mo siyang tulungan. You want to exert your effort. Kaya importante siya. It's a language of love that we can show to other people, even to our family. Kay mama, kay papa. ba? Diba? Hindi lang sa mga jowa natin. Iba-iba. Kahit na sa mga friends natin, ang daming pwedeng gawin. Even helping the person share yung mga businesses nila, that can be an act of service. And that's a form of love. Gifts, number three. Like, Flowers for you, right? Right now, sobrang limited na mga giving of gifts ngayon kasi ang hirap makipagkita to other people. So, how about, nagpa-food panda ako sa iyo, Bea. So, mga ano naman dyan, sa mga, sa mga, sa mga taong maraming pera dyan, <laughs> pa-deliver naman kayo dito, ganun. So, giving of gifts is also important that you are being cherished, the person feels na importante siya. Kasi nga, nagbibigay siya ng mga gift sa'yo or something that will make you happy. Okay? So, again, different people have different languages of love. And this languages of love can be applied to other people, to our family, friends, special someone, loved ones, and lahat ng taong importante sa atin. Number four naman is time. Not only time, but the quality time. Before, we can say, kain tayo tapos movie after. Ngayon, vid call na lang. <laughs> Viber na lang tayo. Messenger vid call na lang tayo. Or Skype, Skype na lang. Iba na yung new normal natin. We need to adjust and adapt to, to, ha, to our current situation right now. And again, time is important. Kailangan natin tong kailangan natin itong i-cherish kasi hindi na, siya, hindi na siya babalik sa atin. So giving of time to a special someone reminds them that they are also important in your life. Na kahit busy na busy ka, sa pagbigay lang ng simple na time for that person like texting or sending good morning, kumusta, kumain ka na, nagbibigay to ng sense to another person na chine-cherish mo siya or importante siya sa'yo. Di ba? Last is touch or physical touch. Well, for me, napakahirap nito during the pandemic, during the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ang hirap makipag-hold hands, makipag-kiss, or even making love, napakahirap nito. Sobrang difficult during to our situation right now. But again, you need to adapt and adjust. Patiently wait. <laughs> right? And there are still several types of love naman na pwede nyong gawin to a special person. Alright, how about kissing your mother, kissing your father, di ba? Good night, good morning, or hugging them. Di ba? Ang sarap sa feeling kung hindi lang, kung yung taong minamahal mo, kahit ako mismo, I, I hug my parents, I hug them, I kiss them, like, good morning ma. Those kinds of gestures I do. So, gawin nyo rin sana sa bahay ninyo, guys. Gawin nyo rin sana sa own family ninyo. I think this will give them happiness. You're spreading the oxytocin, the hug hormone to your family and to your friends. But sta always, stay safe lang kayo, ha? Alright, so, sa palagay ninyo, ano sa palagay ninyo yung pinaka-importante sa lahat? Well, para sa akin, wala namang pinaka-importante sa lahat, depende to sa person, Ano yung primary language na ginagamit nyo madalas? Depende to sa inyo. And it all depends to the other person. So, wag tayong mag-judge kasi, kasi we are all diverse. We are all different. And we need to accept each one. How we show our love and concern to others. Hugot question number five naman. Sa panahon ngayon, 
Ano ba ang mas mahalaga? Matinong makakasama o pera? Okay, gusto niyo talaga ng real talk? Well, sa panahon ngayon, may crisis tayo ngayon. Of course, we need to survive. We need the financial means to, to survive para makakain sa araw-araw. Pero, how about having a special someone or having a person to be with you during the course of the pandemic? It had caused anxiety to so many people. It, has, it, it had caused people to panic and caused them to really worry a lot. Ang daming nagawang or ang daming nangyayaring mental health problem ngayon. Kaya, para sa akin, balanse lang. Kailangan natin ng someone wherein we can depend on a support system. But at the same time, we need to earn money and find routes paano tayo makaka-earn ng pera para mag-survive sa pandemic na to. Again, this is not this is not permanent. This is just a phase. But we are now currently going to a paradigm shift. So adjust tayo kung ano yung sinasabi ng government sa atin. Gawin natin. Let's participate and collaborate with one another. Here is a question I want you to answer in your mind. Not really a question but a thought. It is easier to fall in love yet so difficult to stay in love. Partially true. For many people, ang hirap, ang hirap magstay in a relationship. Ang dami kong friends na who are, who are now like currently saying to me nang hindi lang dahil sa mga anak ko, matagal na kaming naghiwalay ng partner ko, not because of this and that, kung hindi lang kami live in together, umalis na ako dito, kung wala na akong pera, nakipaghiwalay na ako sa kanya, ang daming reasons. No? Paano may iwasan yung pagsasawa sa isang tao? Yun yung gusto kong ipa ipaintindi sa inyo later on. So just keep on watching this podcast webinar. So again, easier to fall in love. True, ang daling ma-fall in love. Nakita mo lang siya. Nakita mo lang sa Facebook yung crush mo. Uy, fall in love na agad ako sa kanya. Uy, yung mga mata niya, the way she speaks, ganyan, di ba? Madaling ma-fall in love. Pero ang hirap mag-stay or mag-commit pa sa isang relationship. Di ba? So again, as early as this face you are right now, mga bata pa kayo, kailangan yung intindihin to at isa puso ninyo para hindi kayo hindi kayo masaktan sa huli. Kasi all of us can be a victim of falling out of love and being heartbroken. So, let's go to the relationship building skills during the pandemic. So, I will teach you some of this building relationship building skills that we can apply not only to our special someone but also to our family and friends na alam niyo na nasa bahay rin kasama natin araw-araw. So this is it. Number one, be mindful of your language and your tone. Alright. Daily conversations is important. We do this every day. We vid call or even we chat or talk to our parents or to our siblings na nasa bahay. The composure how we say the words like halimbawa kumain ka na iba kasi pag once sinabi mo na kumain ka na parang may galit di ba pero pag once sinabi mo na kumain ka na may lambing di ba the choice of your words as well di ba so yung mga words ninyo careful kayo kasi yung mga words ninyo minsan nakakasakit sa ibang tao like for example um ang tamad mo naman. Iba kasi yung tamad sa baka naman, baka naman may sakit ka or baka naman pagod ka lang. Diba? Yung choice of words natin, importante when we are conversing to other people and as well as the tone of our voice. The rise of our, of our voice, minsan, it can depict that we are angry with a person. Kaya careful tayo sa language and yung boses natin. Okay? Number two naman is give and take relationship. Every relationship, not really lang, doesn't connote lang sa mga mag but also to our family and friends. Give and take dapat tayo. We must build our relationship. Respect each other. You gave respect to me and I give respect to you. You show support and I will show you support. You appreciate and show your affection. Love should come in both ways. Hindi lang yung one directed 
or hindi lang yung one directed love lang, di ba? Kasi ang hirap nun, para bang ikaw lang yung effort ng effort. Later on, magsasawa at magsasawa yung other person. Okay? Number three is respect of each other. This is very important. Don't be so insensitive, insensitive to your partner's feelings. Like, he or she can also feel hurt sa mga words mo o paano, ka mag, paano mo siya itreat. Okay? Importante na merong pa rin respeto. Hindi pa rin nawawala yung respect kahit na nag-aaway kayo. For example, nag-aaway kayo. Huwag mo na sigurong sabayan yung other person para hindi na mag-explode. You just respect your relationship and you respect the person. Kasi kahit na, kahit na partner mo siya, siya pa rin yung mother mo. Or siya pa rin yung, not really your mother, siya pa rin yung person na minahal mo at pinili mong minahal. Kahit na mag-away kayo ng father mo, tatay mo pa rin yun. Father mo pa rin siya. Respetuin mo yung tao kahit na ayaw mo yung behavior niya. Kasi I'm very sure babalik at babalik to sa inyo. Okay? Number four is acceptance of your partner. No one is perfect. Even your father, your mother, your brother or sister, walang perfecto sa inyo. You need to accept the past of your partner, yung flaws ng person na yon, yung mga imperfections, yung mga hindi mo gustong quality sa kanya, kasi I'm sure, hindi ka rin perfect. Why would you expect a person na maging perfect din, not really perfect, or maging perfect, na hindi ka naman perfect at the, at the first glance, di ba? You need to accept the flaws or yung mga kulang sa taong yon. It house, it shows here that you are building the relationship when you start to accept those qualities, those traits na ayaw mo sa kanya. Okay? Number five is personal space. Very important to, especially kapag malapit na kayo magkaroon ng burnout or relationship toxic burnout, ganyan kumbaga. So you don't own your partner, hindi mo siyang hawak 24-7. Hindi kailangan magkausap kayo araw-araw because of the COVID pandemic. You always, you also try to remember na he or she has his own life, may buhay din siya. And may mga priority siyang kailangan gawin, may mga module siyang kailangan gawin. And of course, may ibang kaibigan siya. Meron siyang role bilang isang anak, may role siya bilang kuya, may role siya sa family nila, may mga may mga obligasyon siyang kailangan ng panan. So hindi lang ikaw yung priority niya. Personal space is important. Remember that. Number six is forgiveness, pagpapatawad. So time will test the relationship. As you go on to your dating phase, lalabas na yung mga qualities na ayaw mo sa person, nisa mag-aaway kayo on some petty things, but of course, both of you are going to grow together, you will learn a lot of things together, and you can learn to see the person can be capable of change and growth pa naman. So, may mga, may mga thoughts ka na yung person na to, okay, hindi siya perfect at kailangan kong tanggapin yun. I should accept those mistakes na nagawa niya. Always remember lang, in every mistake na ginagawa ng person na yun, you help him realize para hindi na siya mangyari ulit. But again, ang pagpapatawad ay, ay may limitasyon. Huwag lang masyadong maging martyr. Make sure na nagbabago yung person. Okay? So... This is the most important relationship building skill I want to teach you. Communication is the key. So this is where openness, honesty, trust, trust can still be the foundation of every successful relationships. Matagumpay ang marriage ng family ko, I mean ng, ng parents ko, just to, just, to, um, just, to, um, just to share to you guys kasi may trust talaga sila. Kapag merong problema, sinasabi agad kapag merong issue or kapag merong ayaw, sinasabi agad. Ito, ito rin yung mga na-learn ko from my other friends. Nasabi nila, it's important talaga na you always report the important things to that person para hindi kayo mag-away at, at hindi siya maging root or course or cause ng pag-aaway ninyo sa future. Okay? So, I hope you've learned something from that. So, again, be mindful of your language and tone. Give and take respect of each other, acceptance of your partner, maging sino siya, personal space, pagpapatawad, and communication is still the key. Okay? 
So right now, let's go to the phases of dating. This is by Rick Fox. I want to emphasize also this because ang daming landian during the quarantine period, ang daming mga relationship talaga na talagang nabubuo because mainly siguro sa boredom or walang magawa sa bahay and they're looking for some sort of happiness na they seek to find on social media or to other person. And again, importante na alam niyo yung stages or yung mga faces niya. Stage number one. Attraction and romance. So this is the first stage of all dating and all couples, even on dating sites, go through this. So this is called the fantasy phase or the honeymoon stage of your newfound partner that seems to be per perfect during this time. So ito yung point na nakikita mo yung person na ay perfect na perfect siya para sa akin. Gustong gusto ko siya. And for you, parang siya na yung pinakagwapo, pinakamaganda, siya na yung pinakafit for you. You here, you're still blinded with those traits or qualities na ayaw nyo. Pero na, alam mo na you still, you can still you, uh, you can still determine those things that you don't like with a person but you choose not to see them or not to focus them. So, mas nag-focus ka dun sa mga good things lang ng person na yun. Okay? So, ito yung pinaka-first stage. Tandaan ninyo, attraction and romance. This is yung you get to know each other gradually. Alright? It may last anywhere from few months to about years. And the eh, pinaka-exciting to. Enjoyin nyo yung, yung, yung stage na to. Alright? Ito yung pinaka-happy stage na talagang gusto mo lang talaga na yung happy lang kayong dalawa. You still try to explore. You still continue to learn more about the person. You feel good, you know? And the person gives you that feel good inside of you. Stage number two naman is reality or the stage power tussle stage. This is the reality phase in dating that may creep you in slowly during your relationship. And this may last up to 6 months. This stage signals the end. Patapos na pala yung honeymoon stage niya, yung first phase. Obviously, dito na yung mga first fight niyo. When everything becomes clear to you, nagiging hindi na siya vague sa'yo, unti-unti mo na siyang nakikilala. You start to see the flaws, nagiging visual na yung flaws niya. And yung mga pet peeves or yung mga shallow na mga away or yung mga shallow na mga bagay, nagkakaroon na kayo ng ganun, alright? Na, 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 which, which can cause you to argue to one another. It doesn't mean that you are no longer in love. It just where the reality is setting in. Dito pa lang, uy, ito pala talaga yung relationship. Dito pa lang, this is where it turns to begin na this is what my relationship with you is really as it is. Okay? So, it takes time to adjust and accept this. Meron nga silang tawag na third year itch. I think, yun nga yung term nila wherein. So, yung third year daw na magkasama kayo, ito daw yung pinaka-challenging na part together as a couple or in a relationship. Okay. So, again, this what happens here during the phase two is yung mga first, first fights ninyo together wherein nag-a-adjust pa, na, nag pa naman kayo. And from that fantasy phase, you are moving to the reality phase na hindi pala talaga siya ganun ka-perfect, no? Kagaya ng pagtingin ko sa kanya, eh. hindi pala siya ganun ka sobrang desirable or sobrang intact sa akin. Okay? Stage 3 is exclusivity and commitment. The third stage of dating is about the soul commitment. Again, commitment is very important if gusto mo talaga siyang makasama. This is the phase where lovers express a desire to start seeing each other exclusively. Nag gusto nyo nang magkaroon ng official label. This means that they stop seeing each other, each other people in order to gain reassurance and trust. So, in this phase, they begin to, to recognize and accept that their partner's flaws. So after ng phase 2, wherein akita mo na yung mga different flaws ng person na yun, going in this stage, you begin to recognize that the person also, the flaws of his, and you want to accept those. You're ready to accept the person wholly, na talagang mabaho talaga utot niya, na talagang mabaho talaga yung kilikili niya, na talagang maitim talaga yung kilikili niya, yung mga ganun-ganun. So this means... 
that you're slowly accepting such as the person's goals, the wants, and the needs. Dito na kayo. This is the part wherein you're going to dream together. Okay? Ito, sobrang happy din ang face na to wherein you're starting to build plans together and so on and you chose to be exclusive to be together and you don't want to see each other or other person na ayaw nyo nang makipag-meet or mag-entertain ng ibang person. Okay? The stages in dating involves both partners agreeing to commit to each other regardless of circumstances in online dating. Lovers also invest in their relationship and spend quality time together. So, dito na papasok yung mga cheating, yung mga cheaters dyan. Okay, so dito na sila papasok at importante to remain faithful and committed to a person kung sinong pinili yung mahalin. Okay, so stage 4 naman, we have the intimacy stage. Okay, this stage involves the watering and nourishing the true love that has been cultivated. After two people have bonded with each other, this is when they are ready to experience. Ano ba talaga yung ibig sabihin ng true love? Once you have decided to go into that committed relationship with your partner, with a chosen person, this is where you let your guard down. So, ibibigay mo na. This means opening up to your person, to your, up to the, to your partner and becoming vulnerable without holding anything back. Dito na, magsa-start wherein you're going to, to uh, share some of your secrets, to share some of your past on that person because na-establish na yung trust ninyo sa isa't isa. Okay? So, intimacy stage is much more than the physical intimacy. You also get to connect beyond the superficial. Hindi lang yung itsura ng person na yun yung minamahal mo. Kundi yung personality niya, yung traits niya, kung sino siya sa paningin mo. As you open up yourself to love and be loved during the stage, you also get to see your partner's true character. Nakikita mo na talaga kung sino siya. Ang kabuuan personhood niya. Okay? So, yun. Dito na yung part na papunta na kayo sa kasalan. You also get to understand their hidden fears, yung mga sikreto nila. Nalalaman mo na. And uh, you begin to commit time and grow more intimate to many things to become more clearer para bas maging matatag pa kayo bilang partner or bilang in a relationship. Okay? That's the intimacy stage. So, how you hurdle the stage ultimately determines whether or not your relationship will progress to the final stage of love or dating. So, ano tong final stage na to? Sir said, ito yung engagement or blissful love. So, this is the final stage of dating wherein at this point, the couple ultimately decides to bring a commitment to another level. Okay, so magkasama na kayo, you know the person, there is already trust, there is already commitment. So dito na yung point na gusto na kitang pakasalan and para sa akin forever na kita. For some, this is the stage they decide to do it for life. That implies that the couple decides to commit their souls and bodies to their significant other forever against all odds. For better or for worse, magkasama tayo habang buhay. Yun, this is the stage of engagement or blissful love. The final stage of love. Moreover, they agree to work together inclusively as they make plans for a, fut for a fruitful future. Of course, the plans are being all set and you started to see the person na siya, na siya na talaga yung gusto mo, makasama. This phase is the perfect time for the couple to learn to apologize and forgive because you already accepted the person. You already know ano yung mga baho ng person na yun. Ano yung mga hindi, hindi mo gusto sa kanya? And so, you start also to be open, apologizing and forgiving. You're becoming more vulnerable to the person to helps, that, that can help you as a couple maintain that true and undying love. So, ayun. Dito na talaga yung my forever na talaga. And those are the stages of love. And here is a Joa question number four. Paano mo masasabi na handa ka na sa isang seryosong relasyon? Hmm, paano mo masasabi na handa ka na sa isang seryosong relasyon? Nagtanong ako sa mga friends ko about this. Sabi nila, kapag na-achieve na nila yung mga pangarap nila sa buhay, kapag they 
kapag meron na silang income na, na ganito, na they can start their own family, dun sila mag-go sa serious relationship. Well, para naman sa akin, sa akin talaga, <laughs> para sa akin, siguro pag okay na yung lahat, all set na, I have already served my family, I help everyone, like my siblings, nakapag-support na ako, and nakapag-serve na ako sa mga other persons, and of course, kompleto na ako bilang isang tao at wala na akong kailangan pang hanapin pa. So dito na siguro magbo-boil down na hahanap ka na ng isang person to be with. Okay? Na person na makakasama mo sa habang buhay. Pero para sa akin, iba-iba siya. ba diba? I think iba-iba yung reasons na mga tao kung where or when yung tamang time para humanap ng person na makakasama for a serious relationship. So, I do respect your own answers and everyone else's. Alright, so what are the common relationship problems during the pandemic? Again, the pandemic had caused so much change. The paradigm shift that happened to us, hindi na pwede yung kiss-kiss na yan. Sobrang hirap pupumunta sa mga bahay-bahay, even sa mga friends natin because of the risk of getting the virus. Kaya ang daming problema that can arise during the pandemic in the relationship. Kapag, ba diba, depende sa mga tao. Of course, number one is boredom. Boredom starts, this is where it happens na nagsistart na mag-fall out yung love ninyo sa isa't isa. There is nothing special anymore. This can happen kapag meron na siyang ibang priority or meron na siyang ibang happiness. Well, for those people who are living not under the same roof, it can be challenging to remain together. For some people, ha, not every, not everyone, but again, with the trust and with the key of being committed and being to having that sort of um, having that um, have that sort of communication sa isat isa para sa akin hindi kayo magboboard. You know, you can find ways to make your relationship enjoyable or exciting. May mga ways yan. Hanapan nyo lang kung ano yung mag-work sa inyo. Number two problem is the lack of time and appreciation. In, dito yung time na wherein before, feeling mo na parang ikaw lang yung kanyang, yung kanyang priority wherein you see yourself as in ikaw lang yung mundo niya before at saka ikaw lang yung always niyang ikaw lang yung always niyang ikaw lang yung always niyang kausap where you started to uh, engage in a relationship tapos ang dami mong oras sa kanya yung person na yun at saka ikaw din ang dami niya ng oras din sa kanya you always talk to one another and again this are this can be roots for a failing relationship kapag nawawala na kayo ng oras at appreciation you no longer appreciate the person before parang you always say to to the other person na ang ganda ganda mo pero ngayon parang hindi na wala nang ganung affirmation nawawala na. Okay? Number three is miscommunication. This is this happens when the reality stage comes out already. Again, this happens kapag may mga personality clash, immaturity to, towards the person, the pet peeves, or yung mga shallow fights, and so on. nag na kayo, hindi na kayo nagkakasundo, and so on. It can be a root for a problem in your relationship. Number four is growing apart. Most common to sa mga taong mga bata pa. For most people who are still exploring and finding themselves and looking kung sino talaga sila on finding what what the world can can really give them, this can be a problem for them because at some point of their life, they can have different priorities. They can find new friends, have a new job, and on that note, there can be less lesser time spent together. And this can lead or this can root to falling out of love. Kaya nga, because ang dami mo nang napagdaanan na bago at parang feeling mo yung person na yun, hinuhold ka, hinuhold back ka, doon na mag, it will start for, the, for that relationship to fail. Number five naman is infidelity. In this phase, we're in there is cheating, being secretive, and there are trust issues involved. Dito na talaga nagsisimula na may mga pagdududa na 
na feeling mo meron na siyang iba or hindi na siya faithful sa'yo. Ang hirap nito guys. Ang sobrang hirap kasi when you are with a person at hindi kayo magkasama, hindi mo alam ang ginagawa niya. Importante talaga na may trust pa rin kayo kahit pa paano. May trust kayo sa person na okay kayo na, na you will be together kahit anong mangyari. And you will conquer the pandemic and so on. Be faithful to one another guys. You know, don't be a cheater. Okay? I'm sure babalik at babalik yun sa inyo. And do you know other relationship problems experienced by other people? Baka meron kayong alam. Mga causes of breakups and relationship problems. You can uh, PM them down below or pwede nyong i-chat kung gusto ninyo. Ito lang naman yung mga nakikita ko na possible problems na pwedeng mangyari sa mga relationships dyan. Jowa question number 5 here. Paano mag-away ang mga mag-jowa sa pandemic? Funny question. Well, siguro kapag may mga cold treatments na hindi ka na mag, hindi ka na magsisend ng message sa kanya, you won't reply. Scene zone na lang, 'di ba? Hindi mo na siya, hindi ka na wala ka nang care sa kanya. You, you don't greet the person, good morning, ganyan. So nawawalan kayo ng connection. Do na. I mean, it this will happen to several couples at some point, di ba? Kasi ang hirap kasi ngayon, hindi kayo makapag-meet personally, virtual lang, di ba? Pero I believe at some point, you can realize na kailangan mo na siyang suyuin or kailangan na kayong mag-usap ulit. Ganun talaga yan, di ba? It is a process kasi kailangan mo din mag-isip. You need to digest and process ano yung nangyari sa problema ngayon. Bakit kayo nag-away? Ano ba yung naging mali? At mag-uusap kayo. Mag-communicate kayo. Yun ang pinaka-importante sa ano. Meron kayong, pag, meron kayong common ground. You stay on that ground and you talk to one another. You listen. At the same time, you express yourself. Okay? So, ganun yun. Here are some 7 tips of handling conflicts by Jamie Whipping. Alright, I want to I want just to really share this to you guys. Paano mag-handle ng away? Especially ngayong pandemic ngayon, 'di ba? Ang hirap kapag merong away, hindi mo siya, hindi ka hindi ka makapunta sa kanya, hindi mo man lang siya malapitan, limited ang inyong ang, ang inyong conversation. Walang masyadong physical touch or walang masyadong physical presence. Paano ba mag-handle ng away? Ang anong away? First is Create a welcoming environment for an open communication. Here is learning to listen and seeing the other person's point of view. Nag-away kayo because hindi kayo nagka- nagkaintindihan. Yun yung pinaka-common eh sa lahat-lahat. In this note, kailangan mong tignan bakit ba siya nagalit sa'yo? Ano ba yung hindi niya gusto? Okay, hindi ko gusto yun. Well, for yourself, titignan mo kung kaya mong kung kaya kang mag-adjust sa ganong characteristic or sa or sa ganong pananaw ng other person. Tingnan mo muna kung sensible ba 'yun. At kung at kung meron siyang point, sabihin mo sa kanya at, at mag-usap kayo. Okay? It should be an open communication, not an open relationship, ha? Open communication. Kailangan open yung lines ninyo. Explain nyo na kailangan mag-usap tayo. Hindi tayo mag-aaway, ha? Kailangan we need to listen and we need to talk. And not shouting. Hindi natin kailangan mag-away para, para lang mag-usap tayo. Okay? So again, you, you, you can become the better person here by being... By seeing the person or yung mga little things, pakawalan nyo na lang. Huwag nyo na lang siyang i-big deal. Kasi... You should see the person, hindi kung tignan yung problema, mas kailangan mong tignan kung ano yung nangyat, kung kung sino siya bilang tao. Not only because of the problem, hindi yung problema mismo. As much as possible, let's not maximize what happened in our relationship. Ganon. Number two is maintain a calm and respectful demeanor during the heated conversations. Importante ka talaga yung composure ninyo. Nare-retain lang ninyo. Hindi kayo pumupunta sa point na sumisigaw na kayo o talagang meron ng mga pakamay-kamay na yan o meron ng mga gestures na hindi mo na maintindihan yung body language mo. It signifies aggression and this can this has a negative response to the other person. 
as much as you can, you become patient. You remain neutral. Compose na compose ka muna. Kalmahin mo yung boses mo. Or kapag ayaw mo, or kapag hindi mo pa kaya makipag-usap na, na talagang na kalmado sa person na yun, huwag ka muna makipag-usap sa kanya para hindi mag-heat ng fire. Okay? Number three is get to the root of the problem. You focus to the problem, not to the person. I want to always I want to always emphasize this to you. All right? Focus ka sa problema. Hindi mo kaawa yung tao, yung problema yung kailangan yung ayusin. Bakit kayo hindi nagkakaintindihan? Ano ba yung pagkukulang? Ano ba yung point na hindi kayo magkasundo? O ano ba yung tipong nagawa niya na ayaw mo? I just see it on a bigger picture. You see the person, not the problem. Mas importante sa'yo yung problem, yung person mismo, hindi yung problema. Kasi yung mga problem na to, bukas meron na naman kayong problema. Another na naman, problem na naman. Kailangan kayong masanay sa ganung klaseng proseso. Kasi nga, you are in a relationship. Hindi naman at all times perfect happy moments kayo. Kailangan yung maranasan to. For you to grow together. For you to become more stronger. Yung foundation ninyo bilang mag or in a relationship. Number four is watch out for arguments that can stem from a, from a need for, ano to? Watch out for some arguments that stem from a need. Okay, so be mindful of the topics that can spark a big fire. So para sa akin, tignan nyo kung ano yung mga naging away nyo before. Tignan nyo, bakit ba kayo nag-away before? Para maiwasan na siya ngayon. Of course, in it's good to see those those events in your life. Remind yourself those events. Uy, nag-away kami nito. Uy, aw, ayaw niya ng ganito. Ayaw ko din ng, ng ganito. Para hindi na siya maulit muli, no? So, you try to remember and learn the lessons from your previous fights para hindi na siya maging source ng away ninyo sa future. Okay? That's how you grow. That's how you learn. Number five is find some middle ground. This is where compromise should happen. Finding the balance, meeting in both ends. Of course, give and take on every relationship, it's a give and take, no? So you find the middle ground. Saan ba talaga kailangang lumugar ngayon? Huwag mo siyang sabayan. Yun talaga yung pinaka-point ko, kapag may mga heated conversations na as much as possible, huwag na lang kayong mag-usap. Ganon. So you find the, you find the balance, and you try to see the relationship rather than the conflict or yung away ninyo. Number six is you choose your battles. Ito naman is, think, you just ask yourself, is this fight worth arguing? Baka naman sobrang shallow, napakababaw naman nitong away natin ngayon. Ayokong mag-away tayo because of this lang. Ganyan, di ba? So, mas pinapahalagahan ninyo yung person rather than yung pride ninyo or yung ego ninyo. Okay? Tingnan ninyo, ano ba yung mga away ninyo na kailangan talagang pag-awayan? Hindi naman lahat, di ba? May mga away naman na sobrang babaw lang at pakawalan nyo na yun. Kaya nga, i-let go na yun. Huwag nyo nang isipin yun. O, you just choose to love the person rather than the problem. Yun na lang yun. Let go of the pride. Let go of the stress. Okay? And number seven, consider if the issue is, resolve, is resolvable or not. May mga problema in your relationship na ang hirap gawan ng solusyon. Hindi naman lahat merong, merong solusyon. Like for instance, yung mga beliefs niyo, mga perceptions niyo, yung mga pangarap niyo. For example, nag-decide ka na mag-aral sa Manila. And yung person na yun, nasa Davao. Of course, it's going to be a long distance relationship. For some people, ayaw nila yun, di ba? Pero... On this scenario, gusto ng person mag, na gusto niyang mag-aral sa Manila. How can you settle that? Of course, you need to talk. Mag-usap kayo. Yung issue na to, kaya ba nating i-resolve? If not, you try to find an, an alternative route for you to talk or for you to resolve the issue. Yun lang yun. Hindi kasi lahat, for example, religion niya, mga pangarap niya sa buhay. Gusto ko maging multimedia director, gusto ko maging engineer, gusto ko maging electrical engineer, gusto ko maging artist, maging architect, ganyan, ba? So, 
kung ayaw ng person na yun, tingnan mo. ba? Diba? Tingnan mo. Kailangan yung pag-usapan yun. Okay? So, again, I do invite you to please do watch my videos and my YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. Sedi Mandap. And just learn from the videos that I posted there. A lot of stuff to learn about being an adult and learning about psychology, your daily dose of your inspiration and good vibes. Alright, so before I end this webinar podcast, I just want to leave a short note for you. It's better to have love and lost than to have never loved at all. This is by Augustine of Hippo. Again, thank you so much for listening, you guys. I hope that I can meet you personally at some time. Alright, and do good and yun lang, always kayo stay safe and remain happy all the time. Thank you so much and goodbye.